okay and so we finally uh, start the second half of the course so during the first half we focused more on the uh, javascript uh, um, fun foundations and understanding how it interacts with the browser and now we are ready uh, to enter into uh, the world of react um, by, by studying react as an example of one of the many javascript okay. frameworks uh, uh, that uh, uh, may be, may, you may use or you may uh, encounter or find in your future work. Uh, it's just one of the ma main, most popular ones uh, today, but we don't know about tomorrow. We hope that the foundation that we had in JavaScript will help us uh, to uh, uh, quickly grasp uh, uh, the working methods of different frameworks, so even for you in the future it will be easier to adapt, uh, so we are not uh, learning uh, React uh, by, by itself, we are learning uh, uh, web applications uh, and in particular we can uh, write them using the conventions uh, uh, suggested by react uh, okay react uh, as you know uh, has been selected by us because it's one of the most popular front-end frameworks uh, it was uh, developed uh, initially by uh, by facebook uh, and instagram and it powers those websites and was then uh, made public and uh, available in uh, open source formats uh, in this first introduction, uh, we will just uh, talk about the basic principles, how it's working, uh, and uh, the, the, the how to organize the application, and uh, uh, some of the techniques uh, that we, we are able to uh, program. So uh, today we are not going to maybe understand all the code that we write, all the examples that we see. Uh, just uh, the, this first uh, introduction is just a, a general overview about, ju just to give us the idea of how it works, how uh how um, a react application is structured and so how we can um, ex uh, start thinking about uh, redesigning our application in a way that is compatible with the framework mm. and and of course we'll try to also understand what is happening uh, because we uh, really know uh, uh, what happens at the javascript level level uh, <coughs> javascript frameworks uh, started to be developed uh, when uh, uh, programming JavaScript at the you know uh, at the language level at the DOM level was uh, became too complex, uh, and uh, especially uh, the browser environment uh, uh, today is uh, even uh, more comfortable than it was maybe five or ten years ago, uh, because there are more methods and they are uh, say more uniform. But in any case, uh, the DOM methods are not so clear in some elements, especially for the forms. Uh, some elements behave in some way, some other elements have different attributes or different methods. Uh, and uh, uh, so there are, mm, the, the programmer needs to take into account all these uh, strange behaviors uh, that uh, are due to the 25 years of, of history of HTML and the DOM. Um, and uh, uh, and also uh, the we by working with a framework we can work with a, with a higher level so in 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 the dom programming we are constrained only to use those components uh, those elements uh, that are offered by the browser so whether it's a div whether it's a p whether it's a table uh, th those are the components uh, we cannot define our own and and the framework in, in on the other hand on the other hand uh, does exactly that let's us define uh, different uh, higher level components that, that behave like html elements but actually are composed of them and um, and in many cases also uh, uh, one of the problems uh, that we find uh, uh, is uh, the mm, the processing of, of, of events uh, uh, for example uh, even in our lab we see that when we click on some elements we need we must update the part of the page here but then uh, also another part of, a part of the page is affected so you, we must uh, update that or make it visible or make it invisible or change the class so there's a lot of uh, going around uh, of these events uh, and uh, uh, the framework should be able if we follow if we, if we follow the conventions of the framework, then uh, the framework itself will be uh, responsible for routing all these small events uh, and all these uh, small updates and refreshes to the user interface whenever something happens. And uh, we pay this by following uh, some specific programming patterns. So we, we must uh, program our application according to the rules of the framework. We are not uh, working bottom up from the language to build what we know. We are working top down uh, by constructing the application using the rules of the framework, which is not so bad because at least we have some patterns to adhere to and uh, that will guide us in the development. Uh, 
uh, there are frameworks also always have uh, uh, usually a, a big community that provides uh, uh, extensions and plugins uh, so whenever we want to do something most likely there will be an extension for that we don't need to implement everything from scratch uh, on our own and there's uh, a particular part of react uh, that uh, we will study toward the, the end of the of the course uh, which is the most critical one about the state management and we already uh, felt that uh, in our uh, in our labs uh, for example where uh, we don't know where to put the state information in the front end uh, for example the, the list of items uh, where should it be stored okay do i store it in the dom so the list of item is the list of uh, uh, HTML elements that contain those information or do I store that in a separate array and do I put that as a global variable uh, in a class that is accessible from uh, everybody or do, or I decide not to store anything and just to rely on the server to provide the data so uh, knowing where is the data stored and uh, when it's updated and so being sure that all the copies of this data are consistently updated and especially when a, the master copy of the data is changed then everything else in the page is updated accordingly is a big work no? we, we must be careful every time we modify something be sure of what needs to be updated hmm? and so this is the strong uh, message of react in particular uh, it gives us very strong and rigid constraints uh, about how to handle the state so it forces us to think really where to put the state how to update it and so that uh, by constraining us to say have an explicit design of the state location and the state management uh, uh, then it will help us to automate all the other uh, stuff so actually these uh, two last ballots of the two uh, columns uh, are linked to each other uh, we are constrained in the way we use the state uh, and therefore the framework will automate a lot of trivial stuff uh, concerning with the state updates hmm? Uh, the main uh, resources uh, uh, that we will follow for having a first uh, idea of, of React are, of course, from the from the from the source itself. So, from the website React.js. Uh, actually, there are two uh, tutorials, two introductions. Uh, then we'll try to follow both of them in uh, in different moments. Um, one is called uh, the uh, main concepts uh, here and it uh, gives you actually the, the main topics the main uh, ideas that you need to implement and we will basically try to follow that and another uh, version is the tutorial and you know these yellow boxes that tell you according whether you prefer to have the concept first follow this path or if you prefer to have a working code and see how it works and uh, and then learn by doing follow the the, the tutorial um, which is uh, uh, always here in, in the same uh, in the same page hmm? in the same website um, and uh, in addition to this uh, uh, online material which is uh, quite good uh, actually uh, if we want uh, more uh, more in-depth information we can suggest the two books the second one is uh, is free and the first one is a very uh, comprehensive and very long book uh, that has all the information that uh, you want so we will take uh, our information more or less from these two sources and the uh, official documentation in the react website uh, in addition i can suggest you to download uh, the browser development tools for your browser uh, actually there are two different uh, uh, extensions one is for chrome and the other is for firefox in the add-ons uh, of both uh, uh, browsers you find the tool that's called react developer tools uh, in both cases here you can find the links but uh, in any case if you just search them in the in the um, in the respective stores and what this component does uh, what this extension does uh, pr practically is the same in the two browsers it will give you an additional tab uh, in the inspector down here and it's called components uh, basically and there's a second one which is less important uh, that uh, uh, will uh, um, uh, allow you to see the content of a react page uh, according to the components that you define so you will see here a hierarchy which is not uh, basically the hierarchy of html nodes but uh, it's a higher level uh, view of the, the same page uh, in terms of components and for each component uh, you we, we will see 
all the methods defines all the properties props uh, you see here defines on the components and so on so it can give you uh, even if uh, uh, react will be then compiled into javascript and uh, html the in, um, the developer tools uh, will, uh, will show us the high level version so that we can also uh, debug better uh, so we, we understand what happens because in some in many cases the html is difficult to recognize even if we, it comes from our components we'll try to understand them better as we go um, okay <clears throat> so first of all i want to share with you the idea about uh, uh, how the uh, react uh, application are designed what are the main design principles uh, that uh, uh, guide uh, the, the development of the framework itself and of course uh, as a consequence the development of applications using the framework mm -hmm. um, react is a declarative framework tends to be as much as possible a declarative framework so uh, we try to um, describe what happens and let the framework make it happen so we will never um, explicitly manipulate the dom we are never going to set a property on an element anymore we are never going to run a query selector anymore uh, because it's all the work, uh, all the low level interfacing with the DOM will be the uh, work of the framework. We just have to tell the framework what to do, what we want to achieve, what is the results that we want. I want a page like this. And we let uh, the, uh, the, the framework try to uh, negotiate with the DOM uh, how to make it happen. Hmm? Uh, we want to describe uh, the final result uh, and we let uh, the framework uh, um, reason about the order of the operation should i update this or that before or both at the same time should be done in parallel or in series it's something that the framework will figure out we will try only to describe what we want uh, at the end of the of all the updates and uh, basically we split the page into many components and uh, let uh, describe every how every component is going to render itself so it's a very easy way of thinking. I have many components and as a component, I only have one main goal to render myself and rendering means uh, displaying myself, display myself by using HTML elements and other components uh, that we can, uh, that they can recall and combine in order to get the appearance that they want. Everything else is managed by the framework. Mm -hmm. It's not so simple, of course, but this is the main uh, idea, the main background uh, uh, thinking method that we have. Uh, and so for doing that uh, it's uh, for this declarative approach uh, uh, a lot of that uh, comes from the functional um, for functional design no? where uh, it's very important to have functions uh, that return values uh, and these functions will never modify their parameters will never have side effects uh, and will always re return the same uh, value if we want the framework to be able to manage the updates we must be consistent in what we, in what we ask okay I, I cannot have a component that in a moment wants to render itself in a way and the moment after wants to render itself in a different way and so how can react decide which is the right way hmm? so everything should be very clear if i ask a component how to display it should always respond in the same way that is the, the, the cornerstone of functional programming um, so everything will be encapsulated in something that are called components uh, they we will see they may be defined as functions or as classes in in javascript and the uh, basic philosophy is that everything should be re-rendered on every change so every time i change a variable react is prepared to read redraw the whole page uh, totally uh, from scratch actually it's not doing that uh, but uh, as a as a mental as a mental model we can think that so everything we uh, every time we change a variable we change a property we change a state variable we'll see uh, how how to do that later uh, the react is prepared to rebuild the page uh, the html page from scratch at least the part of the page which is under control of the framework for doing that uh, uh, it works uh, with a with an additional layer on top of the dom that we call uh, uh, it's called uh, the virtual dom and the virtual dom is basically a simplified version and more efficient version of the dom that mirrors the content of the page and that can be modified very much quicker uh, so it might, it's faster to to, in, to to query and to modify and uh, it's uh, it acts as, as an intermediate step for updating the real page we'll see and this is a very powerful mechanism uh, 
uh, that allows the application to re-render everything uh, without uh, uh, being very very slow or impossible to manage um, also the events uh, since we are simplifying uh, the uh, the dom uh, elements we are also simplifying the events uh, and some of the, uh, the low level events will be uh, redesigned as something which is more abstract abstract we call them synthetic events that are generated mo not by the real dom but they will be generated by the virtual dom and so they are easier and simpler and more uniform to handle and basically uh, the, 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 the work that remains uh, uh, is to help uh, react and manage the state of the application so all this is the, the big problem now we see that uh, react is very easy to use if we don't have any state to manage so we'll do that in a, in a couple of lectures we'll be able already to create every, every even s complex web pages uh, with no state with no dynamic state when the state comes into play so something can change then everything becomes more complex hmm? um, being functional means uh, that uh, uh, react uh, will create uh, uh, fragments of the user interface so basically each component we call them component many times already um, is responsible for creating a portion a fragment of the user interface and uh, the description of the component uh, uh, describes uh, how to uh, create this fragment and it should be a function only of uh, state and properties where state is uh, something internal to the component that is managed by the component itself itself so maybe whether a given uh, checkbox is marked or not and props uh, stand from properties uh, are uh, values that come from the external side so i'm calling a, a component uh, i'm giving some parameters and uh, in, in react they are called they are called properties or props for short but actually there are parameters that, from which i instantiate the component by giving a parameter some parameters some values to the parameters and uh, the rule is that if the parameters are the same so if i'm instantiating at another time the same component in a different page or in a different part of the same page with the same parameter with the same props uh, then the component will display in an identical way hmm? uh, so calling the, the same function many times will give always the same result uh, this means uh, idempotent and uh, the result is immutable so this object cannot be mute, muted uh, by the way we will discover that uh, state is overrated so many ca in many cases uh, the components themselves don't need to manage any state uh, and so these functional uh, components will be even much easier because they will only depend on the parameters uh, they don't depend on an internal state so they only have one way of rendering themselves uh, depending of course for a given of course uh, value of their properties um, okay so always think that uh, a component cannot the interface does not change uh, unless we change the properties and this can only be done when we recreate the component or we change the state that can be in this case the effect of some dynamic behavior um, immutability is also a key uh, concept that we find everywhere in react uh, as much as possible since we are trying to adopt a functional uh, programming model uh, um, as much as possible we'll we should try to do design immutable objects so objects that will not uh, modify their or will not change their values after they have been created for the first time and in particular the component properties are immutable so a component is not allowed to modify a, a property that it received when it was instantiated and uh, which is quite normal uh, the parameters of a function usually should not be uh, modified even if i'm passing you an object i'm not expecting you to modify that object this is an additional rule okay so uh, you should not be allowed to do that of course the language doesn't force you to do that but uh, you should uh, uh, say uh, respect this kind of uh, uh, of contract okay and also the com the state of a component cannot be modified directly by the component uh, but we should ask the framework to modify it and we'll see there's a special call called set state uh, uh, that we must call every time we want to update the state and um, this is important because then the framework knows that something has changed and so knows which part of the page uh, has be has to be um, uh, modified 
and of course this function should be the so-called pure functions so they should not have any side effects they should the fact that, uh, that we call a function the fact that the, a component is, uh, is asked to render itself uh, must not change anything any data any information any variable outside the function itself hmm? so a function should not modify in any way any external variable any global variable any other variable which is outside the class itself this is very, very important because it what gives the predictability uh, to the page and also it gives the comp the possibility of composing different components in the, in many ways so every component is just uh, just by itself it doesn't care what exists outside itself hmm? uh, so it forces us to think in boxes and levels of boxes but then gives us uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, self defenses against modifying something that doesn't belong so our application we said is made of many components and uh, uh, we have a mechanism react as a mechanism of rendering the application so asking to each component uh, how do you want to display yourself and after all of the components have responded then we'll construct the page hmm? by by a big simplification uh, and this process is repeated every time a state of one component is changed because of course changing the state could change the user interface rendered by the component and every and uh, that component and those all those that depend on that and every time a property of a given component is uh, has been changed by uh, the larger component that is going to instantiate that so every time some some little variable changes reacts uh, ideally throws everything away and reconstruct the page hmm? Uh, if uh, nothing changes of course if I try to reconstruct it everything is functional so I would uh, uh, obtain exactly the same result if I'm changing something then this process of reconstruction I will probably get to a slightly different result or even a totally different result so in many cases maybe just uh, one uh, item more in a list uh, in some other cases there we could be a whole portion of the page which is swapped in or out uh, when a, a little global variable or boolean variable is changed okay so uh, react doesn't care basically uh, whether this modification is small or or big uh, we, it just uh, recomputes the page of course uh, if i tell you that uh, at every little variable change all the page is being redesigned re-rendered uh, you are telling me that i'm crazy because it, this will be uh, totally uh, uh, slow and uh, will have a very terrible uh, performance okay uh, that's where the uh, virtual dom comes into play so this uh, uh, performance of the re-rendering is actually very quick because uh, uh, first of all, React doesn't uh, directly modify the DOM, okay? Modifying the DOM is a dangerous and slow operation because every time we modify the DOM, then the browser will have to recompute all the layout, so apply all the style sheets, uh, com uh, compute the updated style sheets, uh, uh, compute the, st the, the, the spacing and the and borders and everything else. And once it has the box model computed out, then we must convert this mo box model into rendering primitives for showing uh, the real content on the page. So every time we touch something in a DOM, I, I, we are triggering an expensive, an expensive process inside the browser. So what React does, it is a copy of the DOM, the virtual DOM, inside uh, the, the, the framework. Uh, it's an internal data structure in memory. Hmm? Uh, and uh, it's a, a copy of the DOM basically so when we and well, a simplified copy of the DOM where some anomalies or asymmetries of the of the real DOM are being mm, simplified away uh, whenever we are constructing a component uh, the component is uh, constructed in the virtual DOM not in the real one and uh, uh, then after constructing the, the, the new page uh, react will compare the current virtual dom with the new one with the, with the one that contains the modifications since everything is functional it's very easy to keep two copies around because either copy can be recomputed quite easily hmm? from scratch because uh, from the, with the same inputs we always get the same output and they will match the two doms and find uh, the differences and only those differences we, it means uh, those nodes in the virtual dom that changed they will need to be propagated to the real DOM in order to show the difference to the user. So there's an update cycle 
that after we uh, rebuild uh, uh, the so for example there is this component uh, that triggers a state change in the, in our component in our DOM's uh, component in our sorry in our react component i'm changing a state uh, variable and it means that this component uh, is updated is changed in some way and maybe this state is also passed as a property to these other components so this other component will also also be affected so we are affecting some nodes in the virtual dom and at the end of the process uh, the, the whole page is re-rendered we find out that these four nodes didn't change anything because their properties didn't change their state didn't change and uh, they weren't uh, the young children from uh, of, a, of a modified uh, uh, node so they are totally uh, the same as before and these two are are changed uh, the real page didn't change in all this process so this every, all of this process uh, so uh, computing the differences and the minimal set of changes uh, for uh, reconciling the old dom with the new one always happens uh, inside the virtual dom only when the virtual dom is stable so all the events have been processed and all the modifications are being diffed are being compared uh, only at that point uh, these differences and only those uh, are transferred to, re to the real browser dom and they will be transferred all in a single batch so not uh, so they will trigger only one single re-rendering operation from the browser, browser browser point of view so in a way we are recomputing everything that gives us a very clean slate uh, uh, way of thinking we recompute uh, everything and redesign the page from scratch on one hand so easy thinking or in a functional way on the other way for the efficient point of view we are really modifying only those little pieces that need to be modified because we always keep the old copy around and we always uh, know what has been modified and we schedule all the updates at once so that they will happen in the shortest possible time hmm? so this is the model uh, and the layer that the virtual dom is the layer that makes uh, uh, react uh, really possible actually uh, as we mentioned also this virtual dom also has some uh, additional uh, uh, helper functions uh, it has uh, some uh, events uh, that are in, in some of them are just replicas of the uh, dom events and some of them uh, instead are um, new events that are more high level and uh, that will help us uh, in the developing the application and uh, uh, but it, we have uh, we don't need to register event handlers on every component because every component already has natively an event handler registered uh, for it mm. so the uh, handling of components is automated uh, we, un or we only have to define the methods that we want to handle them and then everything else it will be uh, automatic so it's like uh, having an uh, event tender registered for every component already by the system and also so the, the small uh, uh, differences across the browsers are, are hidden so you don't see them and so it's, uh, it's another it's um, another facility and uh, and uh, we, you don't need to care on to manage the events uh, basically from the dom so all the quakes about uh, the preventing the, the the propagation of the event and so on is something that we don't care anymore so every component will just receive events uh, for its own content and we we'll just have to manage those events everything else uh, is managed by the framework and uh, uh, from a more practical point of view what is the basic principle of react hmm? react is based on this rendering algorithm uh, and uh, we'll try to map a react element into an html container hmm? so imagine you have an html page at the, at the given point we have an id called uh, div probably called root and it's one normal node in your html page at that point you want to um uh, we, we most likely that will be an empty node a div an empty div with id equal to root for example uh, so you want to mount your own application inside that container so the the html looks like a, an empty page or maybe with some static content and then a container that starts empty and then it will be filled by react with this render uh, method the rendering says okay i'm taking this component and i'm mounting it into this container right now this component is very simple and it's static we always display the same text 
uh, and so will, the rendering will only be done once at the beginning but if this component contains uh, some uh, events to be processed some state changes and so on these updates will be uh, reflected on the web page uh, from now on after we render it after we call the rendering we are just attaching the element into the container uh, this is a, it's a, it's a toy example of course we need uh, uh, something more complex and uh, uh, may, we may, you may ask uh, what what happens here we are in the javascript world and we are writing html inside that shouldn't this be a string for example shouldn't we have quotes here uh, no and this is a good point in, we are not uh, um, create inserting strings of html into the page we are inserting components so actually what we should write here let's look at the right hand uh, picture for the moment uh, is say we are mounting into a given container from the element uh, a, a react component so a component which made of a div with property id equal to test and this div will contain an h1 with no properties and a content uh, of textual content called a title followed by a paragraph with no properties uh, and uh, a textual call called called uh, a paragraph this is what uh, creating a component uh, looks like when we say that we a component should render itself uh, this is the instruction for the component to render itself a react the dom of div are just a short short hands for a single call which is called create element we are not calling document.createElement, we are not creating DOM elements, we are creating React elements, okay? Uh, but it's very similar to creating DOM elements, uh, uh, except the fact that we are nesting the calls uh, to have uh, immediately nesting structure, we don't have to uh, create the node and then append it, so that's easier to, to work with. So we are creating a, a little subtree of the virtual DOM. Uh, fortunately, the designer of, uh, of React uh, devised uh, a simpler syntax, uh, which is one on the left here, where the same exact code can be written in this way, with uh, something that looks like HTML. Ac actually, it's a, it's a, a syntax which is inserted into, it's called JSX, um, JavaScript XML uh, means. Uh, which uh, is allows us to insert a fragment of uh, something that looks like uh, like uh, uh, HTML. Actually, it's a variant of uh, of XML, and that will be translated uh, automatically by by the Babel library into this code. Okay, so uh, we can write the text on the left. And we know that what we are really doing is inserting nodes. So this should not be considered as a string, as a multi-line string. It's uh, really a set of objects. So instead of div, we should read uh, react.createElement div, hmm? and, and so on. It's the same. It's the same syntax as we have in the right, but it's very simplified in the left. <clears throat> and this is, uh, is important because, because uh, since these, all of these are objects, they may have properties, they may have uh, uh, dynamic properties, and uh, they may have uh, event handlers, because a single string uh, will not be uh, it will not have uh, all those uh, uh, details available to us hmm? so of course we will come to that and um, and the, and the, all the events are strictly controlled by by the framework with a with a unidirectional data flow hmm? uh, and especially what concerns the state uh, follows a very strict uh, order hmm? Uh, by the way, uh, a user is uh, interacting with the view, for example. Mm -hmm. A user is interacting with the view by clicking on an element. So this uh, uh, view, uh, this interaction is, is captured as an action, as an event. Uh, and this event uh, is handled by an event handler, I like normally, that we are uh, now able to do in JavaScript. And this event handler, maybe it can change the state. And the fact that we can change the state uh, then it will uh, uh, modify the view so a change of the state will uh, force a re-rendering of the component and this re-rendering may change the view of, of the component itself uh, and, and this only happens in this way so for from the view you cannot modify the state the only place you, where you can modify the state is into an event handler and the only way to call an event handler is to interact with the view 
and the only way of modifying the view is uh, changing the state if we go uh, the other way around and so the only way for uh, passing around the state information is uh, to use it in the rendering of the component or to pass it as properties to the children components and the, the, these are the only ways in which information can flow from top to bottom and from the view to the event handler to the state uh, and back to the view hmm? and this uh, of course is very rigid but it helps us in understanding what's going on and it helps the framework to optimize all its uh, rendering um, by the way this means that the state of a component is always owned by one single component every component may have a, some state and this state is private to this component that component is the only one in the whole application that can modify that state o only the methods of that component uh, can <coughs> modify the state of the same component hmm. this is very rigid it's not like a global variable somewhere that everybody can change if i need to change some state of a component uh, that component should change it and if the children of the component needs to change the some information above they need to ask permission they need to call some methods and so on uh, so and this is the the, the rule uh, that will we uh, they will uh, will enforce and framework framework will enforce in uh, and it's uh, a bit difficult uh, to to understand at the beginning it looks like we are not able to modify anything actually the reality is that we can modify whatever we want if we just put it in the right place hmm? and so finding the right spot for uh, for managing the state is one of the key uh, design steps uh, in, in uh, thinking about uh, uh, react application and uh, the ch changes in state of a component uh, can never travel upwards so every component uh, as we said uh, uh, can render itself in a different way depending on its own state and depending on its own state it can uh, it could affect uh, the children so the nested component inside of that and no other information propagation will ever happen hmm? uh, if uh, some information needs to be shared between two components these rules tells us that uh, we cannot have information one component uh, being read or affecting in some way another component unless this information is put at the top on the on the common ancestor or the common father or container of the two children hmm. so this is the the rule if i have some piece of information that will affect more than one component this information should be stored into a common ancestor so we see a lot of state shifting a lot of state information being moved up where it's visible by all the nodes uh, that uh, uh, that required hmm? so this is a, a delicate operation which is uh, uh, the key of uh, uh, designing a good uh, architecture for the for the application uh, components uh, are just parts of the page everything on the page is a component from the the whole application is a component uh, down to the single span or div or p element uh, is again a component uh, in the virtual DOM. Hmm? Uh, components may be nested like uh, uh, HTML uh, tags. Uh, so we may have, uh, for example, uh, um, an application for a blog. So we have a big component for the whole application. Uh, we have a component for the container of the page. We can have a container for the list, a component, sorry, for the list of the blocks. And we may have one, two, three components for the individual blog, uh, blog posts. Some of them are a component of blog without images, and the other is a component of blog with images, maybe the same type of component or different ones. And we have a, a sidebar, uh, so there's a component uh, the concern that uh, corresponds to the sidebar and two components that, con that correspond to different portions of, of the page. So when we, we were already used to think uh, to a page as a sequence of divs, of, of, of nested divs uh, with the, all the content inside, we are taking this a step further. There's, there, these are no longer just empty containers or containers without semantics, uh, they are components. And each of these components knows how to render itself uh, and uh, of course how to include other components inside it uh, for rendering itself hmm. so maybe the blog post uh, is able to render itself uh, by showing the title and the text of the blog 
the block container uh, a component here uh, will need to uh, insert uh, or to recall to inject uh, all the blog components uh, that compose uh, some list uh, that has been computed okay so a component can can render itself by rendering some html or by rendering some components that on their on their turn they will render the html or, or and so on so mixing you can mix components and basic uh, html code it, it looks the same basically just if it's html it's just html it goes directly in the virtual dom if you call a component then this component will be called and will be rendered recursively during the tree so we can have a, an arbitrary uh, le uh, level of nesting we will create a lot of intermediate components just to manage this nesting and each of these components will have the responsibility of rendering itself and its children and recalling its children um okay and of course uh, uh, all of this uh, will be attached to a container in the dom that will uh, uh, okay uh, able to render the whole uh, architecture uh, of the of your application uh, defining components uh, is easy hmm, because uh, you can do that in two basic ways one was the old way hmm, with functions a, a react component is just a function a function that will return i'm using the jsx syntax here that will return the rendering of the component just it uh, and these nodes can be html nodes or basically uh, virtual uh, dom nodes or can be other components or the, another syntax another possible syntax is using the, the class syntax we are uh, create a component uh, you see the name is the same so actually it's the same uh, uh, component that it is that may be defined with the class syntax by extending react.component which is a higher class uh, for creating components so i'm extending react.component and i implement a render method and this render method will just return it so what is the difference basically is that in, since we have only a function it can only render very simple components uh, and the class may have other methods here and down there and the constructor and so we also be able to manage the state and manage some uh, um, events uh, that are uh, are, um, are applied from from the for the children um, so we'll see both both usages uh, in the simple case we can just use a function in the most complex cases maybe we want to use a class uh, actually in the latest versions of uh, of react uh, they extended this um, construction of uh, components uh, using function by a new uh, method which called which is called hooks hmm? hooks uh, and uh, in this case we can add uh, also uh, state and event handlers to the functions uh, uh, components so actually right now they are and with the current uh, versions of react they are uh, the, the class syntax and the function syntax have more or less the same expressive power even if they behave in a very slightly different ways we will learn uh, all the three of course this, the function uh, syntax which is the simplest one the class syntax which is the most powerful and at the end we'll also have a look at the hooks uh, so how to implement in the functional syntax the class uh, one um, the creators of react uh, tends to try to push you to the latest syntax and they try to suggest that uh, uh, it's better to think uh, start thinking function and hooks uh, but uh, actually classes uh, will will not disappear in the next future very easily so i think it's better to to learn both ways uh, of describing components um, from the functional point of view these components so these are different from the syntax point of view but semantically they are the same but from the semantic point of view these components can be broadly grouped in two uh, big types we call them presentational components or container components uh, presentational component is basically just a component that needs to display some dom some dom nodes some to, to fill a part of the page usually a presentational component uh, doesn't have to manage any state any behavior related to the change of state it may have some internal state but maybe it's only for presentation purposes so for internal state for saying okay this is expanded or collapsed is having an elemental interface being expanded or collapsed uh, doesn't change the the data or the information of the application it's only a presentational detail uh, 
and so that state can be managed by a presentational component but it doesn't affect any other component uh, elsewhere mm -hmm. it's something that uh, is born and uh, is dead in the same component on the other hand uh, the so-called container components uh, tends uh, tend to group uh, s uh, many other children component and to manage the state for those uh, uh, components uh, for example we have here the example of the block container so the list of blocks uh, is managed by this container this container itself probably is invisible it doesn't have anything to show to us but its role is uh, uh, to know which block post to um, to display to create the children component that will display the blog posts uh, and to interact with the backend for updating the list of blog posts uh, by doing a rest call uh, and updating the, the information so this will manage the state uh, will propagate the state to the children will create the, the the right number of children depending on the state and then pass the information uh, with the to through properties to these children so that the children maybe they are presentational components they will display information so there is not a rigid distinction there's nothing in the syntax that makes you the, the distinction between the two but it's easier for us if, if you think of the role of a component of being just for presentation or for data management or for the container that will manage the data for a group of components <clears throat> you see that the single blog post or the single components uh, presentation one don't have meaningful state to manage uh, because this state has been shifted up uh, to the container that needs uh, to uh, have the global view uh, to know how many posts for example are shown and this the individual blog post doesn't know and doesn't care if it's the only one of it there are three more in the same page the container does care about that hmm? so we are separating the concerns and the responsibilities um, and this data flow is also uh, evident when we think about uh, how values uh, can be passed uh, from one component to another and uh, um, every time we create a component uh, it gets some properties uh, uh, passed to it and uh, these properties are given by the father component by the component that creates them so i have the main components here uh, they may have some properties by the application in the render method and these components uh, instantiates uh, through eight different components in its rendering in its render function and it can pass some properties to each of the children components and this one can pass children can pass properties down to their children and so on so these properties these parameters we called them before which are the only information that can affect a component presentation always flows from top to bottom always hmm? uh, in, we will see later that uh, the events uh, usually propagate in the other way so an event is created by the low uh, level component maybe there's a link here there's a button here and uh, this button or this link needs to change some state uh, in this component or maybe in the top component so what what can i do if this component needs to change some state which is stored there we first know that uh, we first saw that uh, the, the only component that can change the state uh, is the component itself so no other component has direct visibility over this state so in this case the lower component needs to call a callback function on the top component and how this component can know this callback function through properties so properties include data values information to be displayed and also functions so every component gives to their children in the properties there's a set of functions that the children can change if they want to change the state of the container okay so uh, we are passing data through and this data is determined by the higher component that the father that decides which information to give to each of these children and uh, the additional and so this will create a static part of the application and then additionally in these properties we are also passing some functions and these functions can be called by the bottom children because i'm giving them this function they can call it and this function will be called in the context of the component that can uh, of course then use this call for updating its state, the state updating the state can cause a re-rendering of all the 
components and in many cases uh, these properties are depending on the state uh, of the uh, global component so for example imagine you want to delete this blog post so the list of blocks uh, is in the container component the container calls three components instance say three components one two three by giving each of them the properties of the text uh, of the specific block that they need to show block one block two block three post ah, sorry post one post two post three and it gives a, a delete me function and so when an, an action here on this blog post uh, through a button for example or an icon or a link uh, uh, creates a, a delete action and this uh, uh, component will call the delete function on the container component this container component will update its state uh, to remove the second post from the list uh, and it will start re-rendering itself re-rendering itself of course will uh, re-render again the first post uh, by passing the properties the content of the post uh, and will re-render the second post uh, actually with the content of the third one because we are removing uh, an element from a list uh, and so we are shifting all the elements up to, uh, by a position by, uh, by one position and at this point uh, uh, the third one will be uh, will not appear no? there will not be any third children or maybe the container will decide to read another um, post from the server and display this other post uh, because we always want to show three then it's up to the container component and so the fact that a lower component called a callback function on the on a higher component and this component higher component changed the state then uh, all the local uh, all the following components uh, may have a pro pro uh, changed properties hmm? so it's a it's a very rigid, rigid mechanism properties always from flo flow from top to bottom and the properties of a lower component depends on the properties of the higher component and on the state of the other component if we change the state of a component it may change the state of the, of the properties of the lower components and so it will change the way in which they um, they can re-render okay uh, so this uh, is the life of the component the states uh, is a uh, variable local to the component we can usually initialize the state by looking at the property that we receive and we can mu mutate the state only by calling the set state function and we'll see uh, a lot about this function later uh, in, the, in the following uh, lectures and uh, the important thing is that every time we call a set state uh, we are re-triggering the rendering of the component and all the children below we shouldn't be uh, um, um, it's not a problem no? uh, re-triggering the, the rendering because we know the virtual DOM will be very efficient in doing that uh, so we can uh, we can do that whenever we need and uh, some of the state uh, variables even with after after we change them can also affect the children components because the properties that we pass to those components uh, will uh, depend on the current ones Okay. so this this whole play between properties and states uh, that uh, determine the behavior on application mm -hmm. uh, we have this top-down rendering model and this uh, interaction between uh, states and property which are at the core of the simpler uh, or the simple loops uh, uh, con con controlling the behavior of a react application and uh, at this point we are ready uh, to start seeing some real code okay uh, like I, I said at the beginning we don't pretend to understand everything every detail of the code right now but for just for giving you a flavor um, the first uh, flavor i give you is a, a, a very simple uh, approach to react application that we all we will overgrow very quickly uh, to be honest uh, including React uh, in a, uh, by hand uh, in, a, um, in a small uh, uh, file, in a small HTML file. Just to show you how React is simple, basically it's core. Okay, then there's a very big ecosystem around it. Um, that, uh, uh, so you, let's imagine that we have a, a very, a, any HTML page. Mm -hmm. I will make it larger. Uh, and uh, you identify an, uh, a container for your application in, uh, in some part of, uh, of the file. So let's try to do, the, do it uh, in parallel uh, 
I'm not sorry, it's the editor is this one. Okay, so we can open uh, a folder that I prepared. It's an empty folder. Okay, so it's an empty folder here. Okay, I will create a new in, uh, index.html file. HTML file this is me generate okay the HTML sample by by the browser okay so I call it react by hand and uh, I can uh, the body is empty I can just define any empty uh, element ID is equal to uh, we call it in the slide uh, may react container so react container so this is an empty page with an empty div called react container and we are loading a script uh, for uh, for react uh, for the React application main.js uh, what we need to so uh, we want to mount uh, the react application inside the script right and the react application will be inside this main file the next step is of course uh, to include uh, react uh, in the page mm -hmm. so we can do that uh, by simply including two scripts uh, one is uh, the react library here the, there's a development version or there's a mini minimized version for production and uh, um, this version uh, it just includes uh, the core react library the first one and the second one includes uh, uh, the react dom library uh, this difference is because react is also a cross-platform you may have heard about react native uh, that it can be used uh, to create mobile applications so the react uh, module is common to all the different uh, implementation of react and react dom is specific uh, for the browsers so in that case react native will change uh, the react dom layer so since we are in the browser we need both of them and we see from the slide that they are quite uh, simple so in the minimized version uh, react the core library is just five, five kilobytes and the uh, dom library is just 36 kilobytes so it's something uh, quite manageable uh, from my from our point of view so if we try to include them in the browser we just have to add the links uh, let me copy them here and paste them in the in the header of the page uh, in this case sorry this is the react production it's better to have the development react.development.js and react.dom.development.js as we have here in the slides react.development.js okay so we are inserting these two scripts into the uh, HTML file, into the index.html file, and uh, uh, we can, uh, uh, um, and that this is just the uh, a simple HTML file. Okay, so it's nothing, nothing more, nothing fancy. Um, that we can open that. The, the third step: so we prepare the the container and we loaded the uh, React script. Step number four: we can create a new React component. Uh, uh, that uh, can be used for, uh, for example, showing a button. No, I want to have a button, and when I click this button, uh, something happens, for example. So uh, a, a component that I called here, uh, welcome button. Hmm. So the, I'm creating the component, uh, it's separate. Uh, I don't need to, uh, to in, in any way, uh, relate to the, page, to the web page that, is, uh, that contains it. So a component is just something that uh, works uh, uh, by itself. Hmm? It's an isolated component. For, for simplicity, I'm creating it in this main.js file for the moment. So I'm creating this main.js file. Okay. And the main.js, uh, I can create, uh, uh, okay, use strict, strict. I can define the component. 
I could have a module just for define the component, but uh, just uh, it's going to be very simple. So I just think everything in one file. We can define the, our welcome button by extending react dot com react sorry react dot component component extends react dot component so this is the class uh, where we define uh, this button and the basic uh, method is the render method of this class uh, where we just need to um, uh, return a button for example return react dot create element and the element uh, is the is a button that we want to create we don't have any so the first uh, arg uh, argument of create create element is the element that we want to create the second are the properties we don't need to set any special properties to that uh, and the third is the content of the of the element uh, in this case it can be a string hello for example hmm? uh, we'll make it dynamic later so for the moment we we'll just try to see how it works uh, in the basic state okay and uh, the last step see this is more complex we'll we'll come to that but uh, we'll do that uh, one step at a time so the render will just uh, uh, create the element that will uh, be used for displaying that element and finally we must add the react dom dot render a method that will uh, in insert the component here into the container that we found in the dom hmm? this is also the the key step uh, to for making it work so we go back to the code and the main js after we, we declare the class uh, we find uh, the container on in the dom document dot query selector of uh, uh, react container here And we can react dot render the call to react dot react dom sorry dot render uh, of the element. So we are creating an element react dot create element of our welcome button. And we mount it into the container node. And so this is basically the skeleton of the very, very minimal uh, application. So we have an empty div and we are going to fill it with a button called hello. By mounting into the, div in the, into the empty div a React uh, element and this React component uh, is able to render itself uh, by creating a button. Okay. So let's try uh, to, to test it by opening a browser. And the browser is just, uh, in this case, need to load the local file uh, because uh, uh, there's no uh, server here. So I just open the local file. If I load it, you see that we have a button here. If I go to the inspector, I see that uh, we have, of course, our um, HTML page uh, with the container which now contains uh, a button so let me let me increase the zoom you see that the div uh, now contains the button this button was not there it has been inserted by our javascript code and since we have the uh, also uh, um, react uh, inspector we can go to the components tab and we see no longer the the html page but the the, no, the name of the components in this case it's a welcome button with no properties uh, uh, which is how we the, we defined it okay so this is the simplest case we have this uh, uh, just a button being defined as a component now we can improve the component by adding some some behavior for example uh, we can say that this button can be displayed in uh, in i don't know in uh, italian or in uh, in english so we may have some local state uh, for the language 
uh, for defining the local state we must use a constructor to for defining uh, local properties so any any uh, component uh, receives some properties from their parents uh, and uh, may uh, additionally have some uh, state uh, for itself by itself okay the properties are coming from outside from the external side and the state is defined by the component itself the um, usually the constructor should always call the sub super class constructor with the super props so we always have this statement at the beginning of the constructor and then we may define a state uh, as an object the state is an object private uh, to this component and we can define that uh, for example the english uh, is true a very simple object with one property english and so we can also english with the n so in this case uh, this component uh, way might uh, change the message when depending on the fact that this uh, could be english or italian so in the rendering we could uh, customize the rendering according to the language so for example uh, if english uh, then return hello otherwise return ciao hmm? um, in this case this button is not changed of course because english is true also there's an error here um, english is not defined of course it's not defined because it's not english but this this state english okay so the button is still hello but if the state is changed to false then if you render the page again we see that the component has changed hmm? so depending on the current state uh, the behavior of the component is predefined is determined now what we want to do is to make this state uh, change according whenever we we click the button hmm? so we can do that by adding some uh, property some event handler to this button so these uh, uh, braces will contain all the properties that we want uh, to pass to the button element uh, they will if button is a predefined element uh, if it was a component then these properties here would uh, appear in the properties of the constructor but uh, we already uh, we may have our custom properties or we may also use some predefined properties like for example on click which is the property for calling for handling uh, the click event so we don't need to register the event handler but just uh, to specify what we want to do sorry not uh, uh, it's a property so and uh, we can define for example another function uh, where we 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 invert for example the uh, value of the english state variable so we we can uh, call um, set state hmm? so it, which is the only way we could change the state by taking the current value of the state oh sorry by passing a new object so this is immutability i'm not changing the state i'm giving you a new object with the new version of the state where the english property is uh, computed as the inverse uh, with a not of the current uh, state uh, english so we will learn all of this uh, in the next step of course hmm. so uh, when the user clicks on the button i have this callback function that will construct a new description of the state a new object uh, which is actually the opposite of the current uh, version and i'm calling the set state to replace the state on the button replacing the state will re-trigger the rendering so as we try it reload the page if there are no errors when i click the button you see that the language changes and if we inspect the object we see that this object has no properties but it has a state right now this state is english false when i click on the button english false i click on the button english becomes true i click again english becomes false and uh, and so on hmm? so we have a mechanism for rendering an element depending on its state uh, 
for example this is very simple depending on the state i change the text of the button but you can do whatever i want in this render method to construct my uh, my application and i have a basic very basic mechanism to change the state according to some user actions so we decide which actions we want to manage and we have a callback for uh, managing that in this case uh, it's uh, what we call the presentational state uh, because the state is only confined to this component and it only affect affects uh, the visible behavior of this component mm -hmm. so it's a we started with a simple case and uh, um, do we know do we know react at the moment well not yet uh, not totally uh what we can't use at the moment what we can do at the moment uh, is that we can't uh, use uh, jxx so we had to create the button uh, using uh, the um, react.create element uh, which was a, a bit uh, slow and uh, uh, inconvenient uh, so we need uh, also to uh, learn uh, uh, to be able to use jsx for our own convenience but in this case we should also load babel in the script files and uh, the label we transpile the main.js on the fly in the browser which is not mm, not a good idea because it will slow down the browser because the browser then will download babel which is much bigger than react <laughs> and then uh, every time we load main uh, this main will be transformed into a, another version uh, it's not something that you want your users browsers to do you want to uh, do all this compilation transpilation from uh, converting the jsx syntax into javascript you want to do that on the server side and so we have to learn that how to do that uh, right now it doesn't run with a web server because you can't use import uh, it doesn't uh, it has problems with course uh, so we we need actually to move from this very uh, some basic uh, uh, small implementation to something which is more robust and <clears throat> And of course, uh, a lot of browsers, uh, React is using a lot of advanced browser functionality that we may not be available in all the browsers. So it's better to have some libraries that will help us to polyfill the missing uh, uh, functionalities. And also we, have, we are in a very basic uh, uh, save and reload uh, cycle. We have to reload the page every time in the, in, the, in the browser, which is slowing our development cycle. So all of these missing features that will move us from the, the current state like uh, i more or less understood uh, what uh, uh, react is about uh, to some real development environment uh, uh, can be filled uh, uh, by by simple script mm -hmm. so the the react people um, defined uh, uh, specified a very uh, handy script uh, which is called create react app that will create the framework for a new react application and we'll uh, um, download all the needed packages and configure them which is a complex issue configure all of them both for development testing and deployment and real de uh, de uh, deployment um, and so with just this simple call so we can move uh, try to open a new a new project we open a terminal and instead of creating this uh, by hand uh, we can uh, and mpx uh, create uh, react app we call them react uh, the first application the first real application using by this uh, with this script mm -hmm. npx uh, stand for execute uh, an npm script so we don't we are not installing anything we are just uh, uh, downloading the script and running it for the first time and i'm creating this directory in which the uh, uh, project uh, will be uh, stored and this is a very heavy operation so as i said in the slides it will download uh, 200 and more uh, megabytes of data uh, and it will store that in your project of course most of this information will not be loaded by the browser uh, because uh, loading 270 megabytes and uh, for every web page is it would be crazy but a lot, uh, most of these packages are used on the server side for pre-processing, for checking, for polyfilling, for uh, transpiling, uh, uh, for testing and so on. There's a lot of uh, uh, stuff going on uh, behind, behind the scenes uh, here. And so this uh, really downloading um, tons and tons of, uh, of, of, um, of packages uh, that, that we, we may, most of them, we don't even need to, to know about them so that um, 
there is very very easily wrapped uh, and so uh, we, we just know that they are there and uh, while this is running uh, um, i we let's have a look uh, uh, so we create a, um, a directory in which we can start the project mm -hmm. and then uh, it, npm start will start uh, the web server uh, that will serve the, the, the project uh, and all these web servers will have all the features installed so we can use JXX, we can use uh, modules and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, while this is still working, uh, maybe we can have a look at the final result. The final result is something like this. Uh, we create um, a folder uh, where we have a source directory and a, pub a public directory. A public directory is for static files uh, being served by this uh, uh, web server, which is not ex Express, it's another web server in internal to React, but uh, uh, the, uh, the idea is more or less the same. And the source file uh, contain, will contain the sources of the application, so all the JavaScript files, basically. Uh, there are some fixed points, so you cannot customize it uh, freely. There are some fixed points, so you must have a, a, an index.html file, and this is the, the root of your application. The, the real page, uh, they will be published uh, at localhost 3000. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the good part is that the browser is instructed to automatically reload the page whenever we modify the application. So not only the web server is restarted, uh, but uh, still better, uh, the um, the the front end page is refreshed so you you, you see that your changes to the application in real time without even reloading the browser no? because the browser is already running the react application um, usually you don't have to modify this index uh, unless you want to you know to change the title or something like that then we have index.js uh, here which is the starting point of the application that basically calls uh, react dom dot render it's very simple this file that uh, starts up the application mm -hmm. so if you want to customize customize the startup application you just work here uh, otherwise your application is inside app.js app.js is ready for you to to wipe out and reconstruct your application from scratch by the way there are also some test scripts uh, uh, here for testing the application and so on so let's have a look uh, whether the project is ready yeah so we can uh, like it says uh, uh, maybe we can open this folder so we can see the files uh, react first here that we just created and we see we have all the public files and the source files like we saw in, in the slide and we run in the terminal npm start and this will start a, a, a web server now something is already running on this port uh, so let's change the port for the moment uh, on 3001 okay because the, the, uh, there was already a server running And okay, so after a, a, a bit while, uh, a little moment, uh, we saw that uh, uh, this strange uh, page is being loaded. Hmm? So this is our uh, application that will be deployed in localhost uh, 3001. Hmm, this moment because port 3000 was already busy, and uh, um, it's our application. Uh, this is the content of the app.js. If we modify app.js, this page is automatically modified. Uh, app.js here was just, uh, you see, it's importing React, it's importing a logo, it's, uh, it contains uh, some, some code uh, for uh, showing this load go and having this uh, learn React uh, just to test if uh, we write learn React now and we save the file. We, and we go to the browser, you see that the, it has changed immediately. So we, we didn't need to reload this page. It's just uh, reloading uh, in real time. So we already have all the framework just to develop. We, are, we may only focus on the development. We customize the index.html. The index will contain uh, some standard elements and then these root elements so all the react uh, application will be mounted in this node and the application that we mount uh, is in app.js uh, 
the index.js as we said is quite uh, small because it's, it, it only has one render call of rendering the app into the root node so it's uh, what we did by hand is now uh, embedded into index.js so our work, uh, this is just a container component, our work is uh, to develop the app component. So a React application means creating one component, one React uh, component, which is called app. This component can do whatever it wants, we can create other components, uh, uh, open the page uh, and do uh, whatever they want. Hmm? Uh, here also there are some predefined uh, style sheets that we can change, you can customize, you can customize basically whatever you want. As long as you don't touch the names of index.html, index.js, then the rest can be customized very, very easily and very freely. So it gives you the, the framework for developing your application. And for example, I have here in the slides uh, the, uh, the, the how we can we can translate our button interface, a button application into this uh, new environment. So we will uh, we would implement the welcome button as a separate uh, uh, module, for example. So we the, the definition of the class, which is the same, eh? it's the same code as before. Uh, we can put that into a separate class and export this uh, component, and we can modify the application, the app, uh, just by uh, the app will render. Uh, the welcome button. Well, render may be a div uh, with a welcome message uh, and after that a welcome button. Mm -hmm. So we are creating the, the web page by using, uh, uh, by using a component, by creating, a, by rendering actually a, a component. You see that we are using the, the JSX syntax here. I could have used also the JSX syntax here. Is, I, I did use sorry the JS6 syntax here because you see it's no longer react.create element but it became button and the, the properties are no longer in the as a property of an element but they look like uh, attributes of a tag so it's much simpler as a syntax but the, but the functionality is exactly the same so we are now the possibility of using modules and using the JSX syntax to do the same thing is a much more convenient way Plus, uh, we have all this development environment in which we have the automatic reloading that will make uh, the debugging also easier. And also the, the, um, the server side and the client side are continuously in contact. So when you see uh, an exception in the browser, this exception will also be logged in the console of the server. So it's easier for you to see if some exception appears uh, without going and seeking or checking in the, in the development tools in the, in the, in the browser. Okay, so this will actually behave exactly in the same way as before. Uh, we will publish this um, this project, uh, and uh, uh, so you can in, implement uh, that in your own. But there's nothing really different to see uh, here compared to the other to the other um, case. Uh, just a note: uh, when you are sharing or saving onto um, GitHub your uh, project. Uh, uh, be uh, very careful not to include the node modules uh, folder because it's really uh, huge. And in fact, the git ignore uh, should, should ignore the node modules uh, uh, from you. Okay. So when you do, it's uh, the git ignore is uh, created automatically by the creator attack uh, React app uh, script. So it's uh, already predefined not to uh, push all the 270 megabytes uh, of the of the code. So when you clone a project you will only receive uh, your source code and not all the modules to populate the modules you just have to run npm init uh, install npm install in your folder and it will read the package.json uh, check the dependency of uh, package.json and install all of these uh, uh, libraries hmm? all of these uh, scripts and uh, the you see the react and react dom are small but React scripts uh, will transitively download a lot, a lot uh, of other of other stuff. Of other, uh, all the other megabytes that come from the scripts uh, that will allow you to start and uh, and translate and so and compile it. Okay. So that's for for the first run. You can test. Uh, we'll publish on, on GitHub both the simple application and this one modified with the button with with this uh, actually couple of uh, of modification. These two slide two files that you can see in the slide and you can start playing by yourself. So right now we are with the very, very basic knowledge. Uh, the road ahead is, of course, is still uh, long, and uh, we try to, we need to learn and understand uh, 
much better what happens at every state uh, uh, what is the, the, the all the, mm, the behavioral components and properties whether you use as a, as a function or as a class uh, all the syntax in JSX which is uh, very powerful because you can nest uh, uh, components and JavaScript code and JavaScript inside components and components inside JavaScript so it gets really rich uh, all the matter about state and events how to, to propagate uh, new forms so the the way uh, react will uh, um, simplify the management of html5 forms uh, and uh, and then all the most complex things about how to put all of this together into an application so how to make the application have different uh, uh, pages uh, uh, that can be uh, navigated through and without losing the history and uh, this, is, uh, this is the goal of the router for so having a one single web page look like many application pages uh, and uh, finally for example the hooks uh, that will allow us to create rich components with the syntax functions with the, the latest developments uh, of react and so on so this will be the work of the, our next uh, weeks uh, to learn all the or not all uh, the most important details uh, about this framework so that we can be more proficient in developing application uh, some of them will be more uh, say syntax issues like jsx uh, just a library that works in some way some of them like uh, handling of states or forms uh, will be more conceptual also because we will have to to learn to shape our application take into account uh, uh, that specific uh, uh, way of thinking and way of implementing mm -hmm. But I hope that this introduction will give you already the gist uh, that this framework uh, uh, will help us uh, with the development uh, and of course we'll need to still have in mind uh, what is a function, what is a closure, what is a callback, what is a class, uh, uh, what is what the this, uh, what's an object how to assign. It. So all that we learned in the, in the first half of the course uh, will help us in understand very well what we are writing. Mm -hmm. uh, in many other, in many non-university non courses they are starting uh, the course at this point uh, saying okay a component uh, is done with the syntax but i don't think it's acceptable for uh, computer engineering to write some code without understanding what is happening under the hood even because in the, the next framework uh, around the corner uh, the syntax will be different but the language uh, below that will always be the same so we hope uh, we are doing something maybe uh, we are taking the longer road uh, but it's for the future uh, for our uh, uh, for your uh, career so thank you and uh, we we'll see you in the next weeks for more details about uh, components and JSX. Thank you.